We'll call the meeting er, to order at 159. We have a roll call. Chair Bergerman? Here. Vice Chair Hall? Here. Ms. Major? Here. Ms. Hales? Here. And Ms. Howard is absent. Okay, the first, we do have a quorum, do we not? You do. First item of business is to discussion of the budget finalization. Ron? Well, after what, six, seven months, the budget was finally approved last night. Um, the, oh, that's gone. The, the, like last night was September 20th, the millage rate was approved at 5.37, so it didn't change. Uh, the city of budget was approved at 76,422,791. So now we're, budget's all ready for the new year, October 1. I just, the only thing now I have to do is all the re required uh, reporting to the state on all the, on the millage rate and the budget and stuff, but I'll do that in the next couple of days, but glad to have it done. You know, as I say, it's been going on since I think departments putting in their budgets in February, so it's been a long process. I didn't know what, I didn't want to put too many slides in here. I know you've probably seen these slides all the time and <laughs> probably get sick of them. <laughs> Um, this was the revenues for the total city, uh, breaking up by category, taxes, permits, intergovernmental, and so forth. Uh, budget for 23, and then comparing it to 24, the dollar change, and as you can see under the dollar change, the total budget's going up 736,000, which is 0.97%. Um, some of the bigger increases are the taxes at 1.9 million. You know, about 1.4 million of that is property taxes. Uh, charges for services going up, and that's mostly in the water and sewer, but I think a big chunk is the sanitation, one, one about 500,000 due to the new contract. Um, interest earnings going up nicely, you know, rates of return are going up. Um, we're, we're using less of the non-revenue transfers. That's mostly because last year we budgeted three million with the ARPA money, but we didn't need to do that this year. So that's the revenues for the total city. Uh, for the total city, the, how it breaks down by uh, different sources, uh, highlighted as charges for services at 45%, which is the largest, and I think that's followed by taxes at 30%, and, um, and transfers and miscellaneous and interest, uh, intergovernmental and permits. Uh, this, on the other side is the total city expenditures by category, again, with the budget for 23 the 24, and then you know, breaking it down by personnel, operating capital, and debt, and so forth. Uh, say one of the bigger increases is the um, personnel increasing 2.9 million, or 9.38 percent. Operating expenses another 2.3 million, or 10 percent. Uh, capital's gone down uh, because last year we budgeted three million of capital. It was the first year with ARPA and stuff, so we had budgeted three million there. We didn't need to have that in there this year because it comes over on the resolution. So that was three million of it. About the other two million is some less capital being budgeted in the water sewer fund. Um, debt service, there's no other really big changes there. So that's a total increase of the 736,000 of the expenditures at the 0.97%. How it breaks down by a different categories, personnel costs are 45%, followed by operating at 33%, capital outlay 11, almost 12%, then debt service and grants and transfers. <clears throat> I didn't want to put too much in here, but I just thought I'd go over some of the bigger items here of interest. Uh, new positions, there's nine new positions full-time. There's uh, the six firefighters, three that are funded by the SAFER grant, which is going to pay 100% of the of the of those positions for three years, and after that, the city pays for it. Uh, the three new uh, positions funded by the county for the uh, rescue transport vehicle, um, they're paying for half a year, so it's going to start April 1st. So we budgeted half positions this year, but then annually after that, the, the county will reimburse us 100%. Uh, two new police officers, and when they ask for these, I, I we've done this sometimes where we say, you know try to save some money the first year, we go, well, can we start funding about half of the year? So they'll advertise probably in maybe January and try to fill the position starting April 1st. Uh, and the building development assistant to help out down there. And um, it, funding started January 1st. If the needs, if it's earlier, if they need it, you know, we'll find the money for it to start earlier because I know they're busy down there. 
Um, just some other items of interest at general employees, they got increase in pay increases between five to 8%. And we did higher increases for the lower wage employees, trying to get, you know, with the, we brought everybody up to 15 bucks an hour, but now we're hearing the new number is 18 bucks an hour. So we're gradually trying to work over that over the next couple of years. So we, that's why we did the five to 8%. Some people at the lowest salaries got eight, we got eight, seven, six, and then the five. Um, police officers, their three-year contract was approved for 24 through 26. Uh, the first year was, the average was right around 11.7% for police, and year two, 7%, year three, 6.9. Firefighters, that's their three-year contract also, the overall average for the first year was 14.1, then year two, 4.4, and then year three, 4.3. Uh, getting into funding the retirements, uh, general employees, we're still at the 9%. It's a defined contribution plan where the city just pays 9% to employees and then they invest it how they want. Uh, so it's still at 9%. Total cost about 1.3 million. Police officers are defined benefit plans. So it's, the contribution is an annual required contribution as per the actuary. Uh, we, do, we started to lump some payment about Three or four years ago, we found that we could save money that way, roughly about seventy-five thousand a year by paying a lump sum at the beginning of the year. Um, so the lump sum for the police officers this year is around eight hundred thirty thousand. We pay that in October. Um, firefighters, uh, same thing with their actuary and their annual required contribution. This year, it's five hundred fifty-five thousand. Uh, like I say, we'll, we pay them both in, in October, next month. Um, it, what it used to be is it, we, have, we do payroll weekly. It came out weekly, and in each week we submitted the money weekly to the, uh, to the plans. Uh, insurances, health insurance went up 7%. The total cost for health insurance is 4.5 million. Dental insurance, there was no increase. The total cost about 127,000. Life insurance, no increase. The total cost for the city is 54,000. Workers' compensation, was a 3% increase. Uh, total cost is 450,000. Uh, staying with some other insurances, property liability totals like 1.3 million. Property insurance was a big one. It went up 151% for a total cost of uh, almost 778,000. Uh, general liability, 12% increase, 366,000. Auto liability went up 43%, 114,000. Auto physical damage, 9%, total cost 46,000. Cyber liability, 5%, total cost about $1,600. Um, I said, that's all I was gonna show you on the budget without trying to get it, get into stuff you've all seen here for the last four or five months, and I don't know if you have any questions. Yeah, I, ha I have a question. Looking at the increase in wages and the increase in all the different insurances, how did we offset that? We have enough on the, inc the increase in taxes to off offset those expenses? Well, and that's what the big contributing factor was, was, was the property taxes going at 11.67%. That brought in, that's $1.4 million going into the general fund to help cover the police and the fire, okay. those contracts and those pay increases. That's what the, the big driver that helped that out. Any other questions on the budget? Okay, the next thing is the financial update, Ron. I was just gonna mention my last slide, just that maybe you wanna talk at the end, but we also were talking about when would the next meeting be and stuff, and we were looking towards January 18th, um, but that's something I guess maybe you'll talk about it towards the end of the agenda. <laughs> yeah, we can come back to that. Okay. <laughs> I threw it on that side. Right, that's now. fine. <laughs> You mean you didn't want to keep meeting each week before? On <laughs> weekly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are really desperate. For <laughs> are we on to the final? Are you ready for this? Yep. Oh, okay, you guys ready for bear, huh? <laughs> Well, I was trying to get together a financial update, and it's a usual one with a lot of slides. I think there's 40 slides. I, I was gonna try to pare it down, but I just didn't have time because some of them you've seen, the, some of them, but I'll, if not, just tell me to keep going through them quick or something like that, but. Uh, table of contents. 
you know, and just overall, looking at, and I've looked at end of July, but I've also been looking at August so far, and we just closed out August. It's still about the same. Um, I'm seeing most revenues are coming in at or over budget, which is good. There's not too many that are coming in under budget through all the funds. Uh, so I, I'm trying to have fun with I thought I'd put things in green. If things are going over budget, it's green. <laughs> so you see a lot of green here, so that's good. You know, we're 10 months into the year. That's 83% through the year. Uh, property taxes, uh, you know, we're ending up with 12,484,000. We budgeted 12.4 million. And property taxes are 40% of the general fund budget. Duke Energy Utility Tax, uh, projecting it to come in at 2.6 million. We budgeted 2.5, just a little under 2.6 million. Duke Energy Franchise Fees, uh, pro I'm projecting about, we'll get about 2,175,000. We budgeted 2,003,000. Half cent sales tax, we projecting we'll get about 2,168,000. The budget's 2,095,000. State revenue sharing, uh, 1,161,000. The budget's 1,084,000. And in interest earnings, uh, projecting about 389,000. They exceed the budget of 183,000. This is the red page. These are, there's, and there's not too many. There's a lot of other smaller revenues in the general fund. There's, there's like 150 line items of revenues in the general fund. But, you know, Tree Bank, that's coming, that was, was coming in un, under budget. Then I, when I was checking August out, I saw we had a big receipt in August. So that's why the little in red there underneath it in italics updated that now it's at budget for the 75,000 for Tree Bank receipts. Recreation fees, you know, since, I, I guess before COVID, now they haven't really gotten back up to what they were. Um, I'm projecting 126,000. We budget 146,000. Uh, we, we haven't had as many code enforcement fines. Not sure if that's good. Maybe there's not people viola no, <laughs> violating things, but uh, I'm projecting only 35,000, but we budgeted 131,000. That, that one always seems to be up and down. I think it depends on the cases and if there's a large one. Um, you could get one case and maybe it might bring us back up to budget. Um, it's just the other revenues I'm waiting on is Hurricane Ian. We're still struggling through that with our FEMA people. They seem to keep changing things they want. Uh, so, so we're waiting on our Hurricane Ian money of 148,000. Really the total is about 350,000, but that's the 148,000 is a general fund portion. And we have a tree survey grant of 55,000 and a police scanner grant of 40,000. Um, just some other governmental funds, the gas tax fund, um, projecting 326000 I think it's going to come in a little under budget of the 337000 Impact fees through the end of July, all of them were coming in under budget, but then in August we've gotten a large receipt, uh, so police, fire, and transportation are now on budget. Uh, the other ones are still going to be a little bit under budget. The penny sales tax, I'm projecting 3647000 um, over the budget of 3.6 million. What I've noticed though, the last two, three months on the penny though, I compare the months to last year. Usually when the year started out, the penny fund this year was maybe 10,000 each monthly. We get it, we get the money monthly. It's about 10,000, 15,000 over last month. The last two, three months, it's been at or less than last month. And I'm not sure. The penny's about two, three months behind, you know, from when it was collected. I'm not sure if last year it was because everybody post-COVID and was traveling more, but we're following this just to see, is this going to be a trend where, trend where we're, the penny's uh, starting to go down some compared to last year? Uh, getting into the general fund expenditures, we're, you know, we're 83% through the year. The general fund's at 82%, so that's good. Most departments are at budget. A couple that are a little over they, at the 85% are the police and fire. And that's a lot because of that lump sum payment we do in October until we get towards the end of the year that, uh, that gets down to the budgeted amount. City attorney, we're at 94%. You know, that's due to we've got this a, a, a special counsel fees that the people are looking into. Um, that's 160,000 total contract. Of, I, don't know if I, can't, I think we're up to 80 or 90,000 right now on that. 
Um, and the other one was facility maintenance and roads and streets are at 90% due to some one-time capital expenditures. Now, if you can see this, this is monthly general revenues and expenses, and the blue line is the revenues. And as you, as you can see, in December, you see that big spike up to nine, almost $9.3 million because of that we get most of our property taxes between uh, December and January. You know, and then as you can see, we get most of our money in the first part of the year, but as you can tell, the red line, the expense line, you know, expenses are more than the, and the revenues that, but we've got the money that gradually um, equals out towards the end of the year, what I found out, because if you look in the far bottom right corner, there's one, there, you take the expenses of 27.5 million, and the, I mean the revenues of 27.5, and their expenses is up 26.1, or 1. 1.4 million over, revenues over expenses, but, Towards the end of the year, that, that gets a lot closer. Expenses with year-end entries might be, end up being a little bit more than the revenues, but it, we'll have to see. This, one, this graph is just on the revenue, revenues of the general fund comparing this year to last year. And as you can see, the highlighted up there, the, the revenues are 27.5 million. And down below it in the highlighted in yellow, it's, there were 3.1 million over where we were last year at this time. And as for revenues of the general fund, taxes are the largest percentage at 58%, followed by permits and fees and intergovernmental and transfers. Uh, this is just breaking out more of the revenues for the general fund by the different categories, comparing last year to this year at July 31st. And you know, highlighted in blue, the 1.5 million, that's the property taxes. Permits and fees of 400,000. That's uh, increases in the electric franchise fees and building permits. Um, another one that's uh, charges for services, $172,000 increase. That's mostly from EMS, school resource officer fees, and ticket sales and recreation fees. And pink is the one that's gone down, and that's where the code, and code enforcement board finds are, where we've only gotten 35,000 in this year. Interest earnings is up, and the miscellaneous category is up also. The miscellaneous is up because last year we had to pay the money to the um, hospital for the ER portion. That was 314000 So that was a decrease in last year's under the miscellaneous category. I always like to look, like I say, I tell you the top 10 revenues of the general fund. <laughs> Um, which are 80% of the general fund. And again, property taxes, highlight in yellow is a 1.5 million. Uh, if you're comparing 22 to 23, it's good. It's all positive numbers. And then if you look to the far right column, you know, the percentage for the year, we're doing good there. Some of them, like utility electric, utility tax electric, where it's 76%, you might say, well, we're 83% through the year. But some of these are a month behind. We've only gotten, in this case, July would be 10 months. We've only got nine months, so we're a year behind on some of these. Um, and for the top 10, we're 2.2 million over where we were last year. Uh, this graph is the expenditures of the general fund through uh, <clears throat> comparing 23 to 22. And as you can see, the, the expenses are at 26 point one million we're about 2.3 million over last year as you remember revenues are up three million expenses are also up a little over two million here expenditures by category for the general fund personnel is the largest one at 70 percent followed by operating and um, capital outlay taking expenditures by the categories personnel operating capital and debt and so forth you know, personnel, it's the biggest increase at 1.7, 1.1 million, followed by the uh, operating services uh, and then the capital. And down below, I've sort of put down the personnel increase about 6.83% over last year for salaries and benefits. Operating increases, which we're seeing a lot of the increases is in operating is uh, almost 14% over last year due to electric and repairs and maintenance so far. Uh, capital is up to 252% uh, due to some, a few projects, mausoleum roof, cops and kids, uh, vans, Sunset Beach, Sunset Beach restroom, city hall upgrades, 
public safety building flooring, community city center flooring, and roads and streets vehicle. <clears throat> this is in the general fund, the fund balance, the items that are within fund balance. This is the separate, re up top, we've got the separate restricted reserves, which is like cemetery perpetual care, compensated, abs compensated absences, tree bank encumbrances, insurance, donations, prepaid items, and so forth. Those are the restricted items for res restricted for their, what their item is. And then down below, we've got the unassigned fund balance. That's the number a lot everybody use, looks at because that's the money that's uh, savings, free and clear, they might say, that's available for projects. So trying to project it from 22, the revenues and expenses and any adjustments, and then on the far right, the projected balance for those restricted reserves and then the unassigned fund balance. You know, it, it, it's hard to project it. it. Things could change in the next couple of months, but. I've still got unassigned fund balance at the bottom there, right at 8.6 million, right around there. <clears throat> it could hover, it might end up less than that, I'm not sure. We, through July, we don't have a Hurricane I Idalia in yet. We had about 300,000 of expenses for Hurricane Idalia, and we will get FEMA back, but those expenses aren't in here yet. So that's the general fund, fund balance projected. Change it up a little here. We're getting into the water and sewer fund. Um, I'm projecting uh, almost 10.3 million of water and sewer revenues over the budget of 9.9. .9. Sewer, I'm projecting 6.9 million over the budget of you know 6 million 769,000. Expenses in the water and sewer fund are at 65 percent, or 15 million 632,000. Um, 65% were under that 83%. A lot of we don't have some capital outlay projects started, so that's why we're under budget in the capital outlay. You know, with the revenue increase, I'm trying to, I try to look to see, okay, how's consumption doing? Consumption use of, at, at July 31st is up 2.05% over, over last year at this time, or at July 31st. And you've heard the rates before. The next two items are just trying to explain, okay, we had a rate decrease last year and then no increase this year, and there's no increase scheduled for 24 for water and sewer. But we did have a revenue sufficiency completed. You might have heard about it. Um, went on for a few months. Paul knows we're busy with that. <laughs> but, um, might have seen it in your bills <laughs> if we're doing it you right. You got the inserts. But... We've got a board meeting on it, October 3rd, the first of ordinance. Uh, after going through the rate proposals and the different, we went through a bunch of different scenarios over months and stuff, trying to figure out what can we reduce. A lot of us, the operating expenses increasing, you know, the 18% or so. So we came down to a proposal of 9.9% increase for both water and sewer, effective November 1st. We'll see how that goes on the board meetings on October 3rd and the 17th. Um, so I'm trying to, th I thought there was something else I was going to say about that, but no. Ron, also, we did bring this to the commission in August. That was it. <laughs> yeah, and um, presented our plan. And I, I do think the presentation conveyed it well in terms of the need. I think they saw that one of the things we wanted to make clear to the board and the public is that we really did everything we could before coming with this increased recommendation. In other words, what capital can we defer? What capital can we eliminate? Um, cost savings where we can. Um, just anything and everything. We, we, we understand. We don't really want to put this burden on the customers or the board to do this, but it really came to the point that um, we, have, we have to recommend it. And um, I think we did a good job, and we'll show a version of this presentation again at the hearing, but uh, if you look at what's going on in the area, all of the other utilities, it really fell into line with what other people are doing, and I think that helps explain that it isn't any kind of management problem or inefficiency. It, it really is just responding to uh, to the, this historical uh, inflationary environment we're in. You know, part of what it was, you know, people ask, okay, we did a rate reduction, not this year, the year before, you know, why did you, do? I think at that time, it was a solid plan. It, it was based on what we knew of the economy back then, you know, just, I think COVID hadn't even started, Jim, 
But then after that, the, the inflation went up to like a CPI was a 9.1%. We saw expenses go up $2 million on just on, on the operating costs. So that was a, the big driver of why we're looking for the 9.9% .9 is because the cost of the, op, the operating cost expenses. Uh, more on the revenues, and this is uh, comparing the 22 and the charges for services is a big category, and that's where water, sewer, effluent are in there. Um, they're up 362,000. Interest earnings is up 282,000. Um, uh, trying to think. So in total, at this time, July 31st, revenues are up 636,000. Uh, trying to break out some of the bigger revenues uh, the, in, in the water and sewer fund, water sales, sewer sales, affluent and backflow maintenance. Uh, compared to last year, July 31st, water sales are up 164,000. Sewer, sewer sales up 191,000. Uh, affluence down a little bit. Um, and backflow maintenance fees up 6,700 for a total of, for those four items of $357,000. There's other smaller revenue items in there also, but in, that, in water and sewer, but these are the, the four largest ones. Uh, going to the other side on the water and sewer expenditures, personnel operating capital comparing 22 to 23 at July 31st. Uh, personnel was up uh, 269,000 or 5.5%. Uh, here comes the operating services up 771,000, but as you can see down below, I notated that you know operating is up 18.6 percent over over last year due to electric repairs and maintenance, insurance, operating supplies. Uh, capital's down because there's some capital projects that haven't been started yet. Um, debt service that's basically the bond issue. Uh, uh, Transfers is down a little bit of 34,000. So at this time, you know, we're up 23,000 bucks over over last year at July 31st. The water and sewer expenditures by category, personnel is 33%, operating 31%, and capital 25%. Getting into some of the other enterprise funds, the sanitation fund, I'm projecting a little over six million of revenues. We budgeted five, five million nine hundred eighty-four thousand. Recycling nine hundred twenty-six thousand. I'm projecting with a budget of a nine hundred eleven thousand. <clears> Yard waste I'm projecting at six hundred thirty-three thousand versus a budget of four hundred fifty-six thousand. Expenses through. July 31st are at 85 percent, mostly due to the yard waste project, which I think is is almost done. That was like a $950,000 project out there. Um, the new five-year refuse recycling contract was approved in, at March 31st, 22. Uh, the rates change every March 31st based on the contract, but the MAC, the, the board put in, they didn't want any more than 3 percent, so the MAC they can increase is 3 percent. I think if they could increase it, it was based on the CPI. It would have been close to 6% last March. Um, yard waste project, that was what the new scale house, I say the total cost of that was 959,000. We have purchased a new loader for the yard waste facility. The other one was having issues and breaking down. So that cost 198,000. The city bought a new street sweeper. We were splitting the cost of that between the sanitation and stormwater funds. A stormwater fund, put it in red, but it's not that much. The revenue will be, it might meet budget, but right now I'm thinking it might be just a little under the 1933000 versus a budget of 1946000 We finally got the surety settlement. Now, that wasn't at July 31st. I just thought I'd throw it in. It was on August August 2nd. We got the 1050000 for the surety settlement on the Pent Gross project over here that's been sitting idle for I think a year now. There, that project is out for bid now to get somebody to finish up that project. And that money will be used for that project. Expenses are at 92% uh, or one point or about one, almost 1 1.7 million. Uh, stormwater, it's been in the, con it's been in the ordinances uh, for through 2025 that it increases 50 cents per ESU every year. 
and we're due for another rate study for stormwater, so we're thinking we're going to do that in 24. Golf course fun, uh, it's, it's in green. I'm just saying golf course greens and stuff. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't get, keep saying how much this is a pleasant surprise over the last couple of years with the golf course. I just hope it keeps up and stuff. I don't know if it's not a fad or something, but I'm projecting, you know, not quite 2.3, but 2,242,000. Budget was 1.6. Expenses, at, we're at 77% at 1,271,000. 1, I'm projecting we might end up at 1,551,000. You know, I can't say what's Paul and his staff. I think they've done a great job out there. And I know Howard Howard and Steve, they work hard out there. You don't have that many people that work out there. They must put in a lot of hours and stuff. But, you know, they're doing a great job. The of course conditions that maintenance contractor we have is excellent. The best we've ever had. And the customer service that the staff upholds makes people feel welcome and want to come back. I think those are the two main things. But... We're also working on a new clubhouse plan, finally. Um, that clubhouse was built in the 60s, so probably oh, 60s. the one at the golf course? <clears throat> yes. And you largely attribute the increase in revenue to, like, just more golfers golfing, right? It wasn't like a big price increase. Right. We did yeah. do a, an increase in price, but we're still quite a bit lower um, than the area. And Howard, the golf course manager, I think, has got a good feel for when the right time to do that is based on the feedback yeah. he gets. And he did say if we're able to make some improvements to the clubhouse and pro shop and all of a that, yeah. that it would be a good time to reevaluate that then, but not before then. <clears throat> and are you planning on kind of redoing like the bar, the whole area in there? Yeah. Okay. The thought. And we're leaving the idea open for a banquet hall option. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. I will say Howard's very experienced with country clubs and you know clubs that had restaurants and food and he's, he says his experience is usually those are the loser parts of the business and in fact they'll make the members bear, bear the burden of that with a, a minimum food requirement every month you know yeah. so that model wouldn't really work for a municipal but, but a course. banquet hall potentially you're but thinking? banquet hall potential where you know food would be catered in yeah. something like yeah. that but yeah. staying away from kitchen and kitchen staff and yeah, that's I just agree. A, that sounds like yeah that'll Add another revenue stream to it. Your golfer, that's, that's Cassie. Good to hear. No, no, not, <laughs> not really. But want uh, want to do it one day. But yeah, I no, I've get... been I've been to there, and um, it, it is nice because you have like kind of a view of the course. But it would be cool to have like yeah, yeah it'll be nice. Yeah. We had a good meeting with um, we had Ed Hoffman uh, join us with his background of what historic would be, and he understands the course with his experience with historic society and uh, so he's going to be involved in some of the concepts which uh, we're, we're yeah. excited about that yeah and like banquet hall wise locally it's not like there's a ton of options around i mean mm -hmm. so yeah we even threw around the idea of a two-story thing i mean oh, imagine nice. the view from a that but, would uh, sweet. yeah yeah we gotta look at nice. that budget yeah. <laughs> definitely two-story cost <laughs> 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 I, but I'm amazed by it, you know, and it's just, it seemed to start from when COVID and people, I think people were still, I don't want to say secluded, but they could get out. And mm -hmm. ever since then, it's just uh, skyrocketed. And since we took over the golf course in 96, I've got a spreadsheet. It's always been in a deficit position. This is a, I'm projecting, I, I don't see why not so far this year, that it's going to be in a positive position for the first time in, since 96. <clears throat> yeah, a smaller fund than Marina fees. It's a little under budget, 137000 of the $140,000 budget. Uh, expenses are at 72%, so expenses are going to come in under budget, so you've got revenues over expenses still. So, And the Marina fund got out of the deficit position last year, so it, it'll continue to stay out of the deficit. Um, just some things, uh, Hurricane FEMA, we're still pursuing that. And... Uh, since it was July 31st, but we are, Hurricane Idalia was in, um, is that in August? I'm starting to forget now. Yeah, August. <laughs> Her, about the same, about the same amount, you know, we had to operate, you know, the EOC, it's, it's going to have about the same amount of $350,000 of expenses. And then some information I think you've seen on the bonds, I, nothing's really changed there. 
budget resolutions, I'm sure you're familiar with those, but just to showing you, we did the one in January and then we did one in July to clean up some other stuff. And the main purpose, as I say, is to budget for stuff that hasn't been budgeted for and carry over to 2023. We'll have one more in November to clean up any last minute items. I just do this in here, it's just the ARPA, where the ARPA money is, uh, the 12.8 million, where it's being obligated to, if you wanted to, I won't go through them because I think you've seen them before, but we've highlighted down in the bottom, we've got almost 12.2 million of the ARPA money obligated, leaving 612,000. Just wanted to list, you know, what capital projects are going on there from Lemon Street, uh, Tarpon Lou, Huey is already done, all the way down to Pinellas Trail. That's what Bob was just telling me because that one's the money's coming in for the extend Pinellas Trail on the bottom down there. <clears throat> um, investments, the rate of return, it's like I say right now, our checking account is paying 3.72%, and I can get treasury bills between, between, well, I'm trying to show treasury bills right now and get a one year and two year right around 5%. I mentioned 4.5 because the state pool is just a little over 4.5%. And then information on the debt, of course, you know, we've got the water plant bond, the fire truck, ladder truck will be its last payment this year, next year. We got the fire truck from 2021. We've got, we'll have three more payments on that. And we got a new fire truck that we, we started about a year, not quite a year, a year and a half ago. But we called on it because it takes like two years to get it when we ordered it. But we called and said, how's it going? Because due, we're due to get it this April 24. And they said, well, they're running behind. And they said, we might not get it until January of 25. So, you know, I mentioned it to Scott and we're working on it. Because our, our lease payment for the first principal and interest is April of 24. And I'm going, well, I don't want to, I'm not going to start paying principal and interest. We don't have our truck yet and stuff. They're working on it right now. They're trying, because the contract says if you, there's an out, uh, I think it's a delivery date of June. Some, if we don't get it by then, there's some penalties and stuff. So they're, they're working on that right now. And they're going to get back to us on that. Maybe they'll hurry them up and maybe they'll get the truck then. I <laughs> Just going through some of the other funds and smaller funds throughout, well, the ARPA's not that small, but the other funds of the city, just listing them on the left side, I won't go through them too much, but highlighted what their balances are projected to be. At the end of the year, the hospital lease fund, that lease we got for years, <laughs> 2041 to 70, almost three million. ARPA balance is still right around 11.1 .1 million. We've still got projects starting and getting going. Local office and gas tax fund, 82,000. School crossing guard fund, 10,000. Handicap fund, 17,000. Impact fees, police impact, it'll have 538,000. The fire impact fee will, will be out of the negatives. It went in negatives because we're using some of that money to help build station 71 across the river. And we're hoping to use some of that money once it starts to accumulate towards redoing or the new station 70, 70. Um, library impact fees, 477,000, but I know Carrie has plans to some library improvements there for a good part of that money. She's trying to get a grant. She says it's approved now for the 500,000 for improving a library. So she'll have her $500,000 grant and then 500,000 from city funds for a million dollars. <throat> Recreation impact, 183,000. General government impact, 130,000. Transportation impact fund, 252,000. Uh, the police federal equitable sharing fund, 155,000. The public art fund, 447,000. Land preservation fund, 15,000. We used 180,000 to purchase part of that Ross property that was on Florida Avenue. Recycling grants got 133,000, and then the CRA, almost 1.2 million. Uh, the police education fund, almost 20,000. The police confiscated trust fund, 35,000. Employee benefit cost deferral, 71,000. <clears> the capital project fund, 582,000. Most of when you hear of annual street paving and annual sidewalks, that comes out of the capital project fund. 
the sidewalk improvement fund, about one point, a little under 1.7 million. That's the money that's been s sitting aside, and then the charter pay where they can use $100,000 a year to help improve in sidewalks every year. The penny fund, or called the one cent local option sales tax fund, uh, balanced about 7.2 million. But as I note tied down below, there's five, almost 5.2 million that are still outstanding encumbrances that haven't been taken out of the 7.2 million. Um, a couple more impact funds, the sewer impact fund at 1,474,000, the water impact fund at 2,242,000, the sanitation fund projected to end up at 1.8 million, the marina fund 27,000, <clears> the <throat> stormwater fund 1,156,000, which includes the 1,050,000 from the surety on the Pent Gross project. And here's a golf course fund. As you can see on the far right, I'm projecting it to have 293,000 at the end of the year. You know, at the beginning of the year, it was a negative 397,000. I also get to make, you know, when I'm looking at also the cash balance, the, the fund has always had a negative cash balance forever. Now it's got 400,000 bucks in it. I even had to turn on the flags a few months ago so they could get interest because they've never had interest earnings. So I think they've gotten like 9,000 bucks of interest earnings since they've had positive cash money. <clears throat> Just summarizing the debt again, the water plant bond at the end of the year is going to have a balance highlighted in yellow there of 27.6 million. The fire ladder truck, the lot, one last payment of 232,000. The, ladder, the other fire truck from 2021, 517,000. That would be the last three payments. And then the truck that we're waiting on that's delayed, we'll see what happens. It's, it's a balance of 899,000 for a total of 29,255,000. Uh, you might have heard of interfund loans. We've got a, the three of them, but the loan from Sanitation to Golf Course Fund, that's going to be Zero. That'll be gone too. Sanitation fund to the fire impact fund. That was also a loan back when we did the fire station seventy one. Uh, balance left in there were twenty one thousand. But since we got an extra receipt of money in August, I'm I'm going to see if I can just try to pay that off at the end of this year and get that done with. <clears throat> and then there was one from the sanitation fund for the C to the CRA fund. For 300,000 when they purchased the land at 61 West Tarpon, have a balance of 100,000 left. <clears throat> Getting into investments, I, I just get a kick out of it. You know, I enjoy the investments and buying investments, trying to get the city money as much as I can. But you know, 2018, we're at 3%, 2019, 2%. We hit a low of 20 basis points in two, December of 2020. And then October 21, that's when it started to creep up, and it was 0.45. And <clears throat> now uh, we're getting, yeah, on average, about 5.2% on the investments. And I, I ladder them out, but I ladder between each fund, you know, trying to make sure we have, we're liquid and we've got money in the, in the checking account to pay the bills, but trying to push anything off to try to get more interest earnings that I can. <clears throat> Uh, you'll, you won't be able to see this screen. <laughs> <laughs> this is everything in the in the fund, but I didn't try to, in a nutshell, I tried to write it down. There's like 64 million in the portfolio. <clears throat> Cash and checking accounts are about 6.5 million. Treasury bills about 6.3 million. Federal instruments about 38 million. And then the state pool, we've got 13.4 million. Uh, if you ever want to look at more, but it's got all the information and QCIT numbers are on, on all the investments and what we've got. <clears throat> this is just trying to the different categories. We have 10% in checking and savings. I, I increase the checking savings a little bit more through August and September with hurricane season. I usually only try to average maybe 4 million, maybe, I don't know, quite five, but now I'm about six million just with hurricane season. Um, treasury bills at 10%, federal instruments 59%, and the, the local pool we have is at 21%. Real, I put maybe so, real quick, 
the the interest that you earn that goes t to where like when you make extra income from interest do you have a specified location or remind me well it depends on the funds obviously the bigger you know pots of money are the general fund general funds got maybe 16 million dollars so whatever it's it's separate investments within those funds. So when we earn that interest, it's going into the revenue account for the general, general fund. fund. Okay. Okay. Water and sewer funds, the second one biggest, which I think about 12, 13 million. So, but it's segregated within each of those funds. Okay. And do you say each of them has a QCIP on, on that page with all, the, with all the miniature script there? Yeah, well, the okay. treasury bills all have their own. Oh, the treasury bills, okay. It's cool. the, the treasury bills and the federal instruments. They all have their own QCIP numbers. Okay. I mean, if you really want to see them, they're on the far right column there. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. That's much better. Okay. Great. Thank you. In some of this, I sent the same report to the Board of Commissioners because we're required to send financial statements at least quarterly, but especially the investment policy, I just can't go buying stocks and everything else, you know, treasury bills, federal instruments. But part of the investment policy says you need to every three months give this investment information along with the previous screens, but also what activity, what did you do the last three months? Okay, we transferred some money from Bank United. I closed out the money market and sent it to Chase, our operating account. Um, Send some money from Chase to Prime. Or that's a, Prime is a state pool. At that time, they were paying 4.8%. Then we had a T-bill mature at 1.92%. Uh, then sent that money to the Prime at 4.8%. Had a Federal Farm Credit Bank at 1.45% that matured. Uh, since it was J June, I think, you, you know how we, get, we most get all the property tax money in January and December, but that was probably the general fund, so I sent that money back to Chase for operations in June. Uh, had a T-bill at 1.25%, or 2.2%, I'm sorry, on the far right, there's 2.2%, and sent that money to Chase for operations. And then um, had a T-bill mature on September, July, August, I'm sorry, July 31st at 2.9%. That one I did reinvest, but it was the first day of August, and I got 5.39% on a T-bill. I'm done. <laughs> well, if you got any questions. Yeah, sure. I'll take one. You got one? Uh, just a general. On the Duke Energy, they we're getting income in excess of what we budgeted. Have you noticed that it's been more in the last couple of months that it started to tick up when they did their rate increase? Both that and I think the summer months, too. We started to see it increase. Oh, oh yeah. Peak. Um, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to, I had a couple. So I know the, if I recall, the investment policy was fairly conservative, but it was updated in the last couple of years, right? Like recent. And we recent. ran that by you all. Yeah. Because before I could only do 20, yeah. 25% in treasury bills. And I go, well, they're government back. It was like right? overly restrictive, right? Which is good. We increased yeah. that to 50%. And you, you all approved that. And I think CDs, I went from 25% to 50%. Because it, you know, it depends on what's paying better at that I think when the when rates weren't that great, the CDs were paying a little bit better, so we increased yeah. the CDs from 25% to 50%. Okay. They're QPD qualified public depository, so they're backed by the state. Yep. Um, yeah, I remember that discussion. I'm trying. I think that was what all you all approved. That was, there was it, just, yeah, just yeah, it was just a reminder there. And then the other question I had is just more broad because it seems like there's a lot of under budget, over budget things that came in. Given it looks like this was a July 31st update, given that the 2024 budget was just approved, is there anything major that you're going to look to adjust in the next budget update, given the the, the, over, the over and unders that, that you shared? Today? Hurricane Idalia. Okay. <laughs> that might be a big. We've had some things also. Well, what happened in the budget process? We had stuff that was. We had. You probably see it every year. Budgets items, capital items cut from the budget. Mm -hmm. So we went through that, and we designated stuff for 23, 24, 20, fiscal year 23, fiscal year 24, 25. So we might have some expenses coming in. There was a couple vehicles that not on here yet that'll be coming in. 
I'm going to point to Scott here. <laughs> but no we're, major We're getting changes. a high water vehicle. Nice. But <laughs> you don't, you're not planning any major budget update, like uh, budget changes, like, like ups and downs, necessarily, given what we saw with No. You know, I'm just trying to watch the sale. I'm just curious about how the penny sales taxes seem okay. to be ticking down a little bit. Just trying to follow that. But uh, yeah. Besides Hurricane Idalia and the 300 and some thousand of expenses there, but it's getting with FEMA and trying to get that money back. Um, yeah, nice. It's good to see the, a lot of green for sure. Yeah. I hope it continues. I worry about property taxes next year. I mean, last year it was 14 13.96% the taxable value went in when increase. Mm -hmm. This year was 11.67%. You know, they say this last year was because people sold it at a high value, uh, high value, but the new owners all of a sudden get to pay that higher right, taxable actually, value. Maybe right. somebody had a home that was only 200000 mm -hmm. their basis, but now they sold it for 500000 Now the new, new person pays 500000 But uh, I'd be sort of anxious to see how the, when they appraise the properties in January, what they, and we won't find that out until the first estimate in May of 24. Right, and you'll probably go into that with a, Conservative. That's of course. generally what you do. Yeah, okay. four right, or five good. percent. <laughs> cool. Used to do three percent. I'm think. getting the routine. I'm getting <laughs> <it>. <laughs> that is a concern going forward because we're with our personnel increases to get us competitively. That number's there, and it's not going to come back down. But if our property taxes, we're going to come to a point where we're going to have to do some rebalancing somewhere. I think. Yeah, and you got those those you know the, with the wage increase, those are recurring expenses and stuff in this. Yeah. And you, I just like I say, I, that's like back when we had what they called the Great Recession, you had sort of a double whammy. The taxable values went down for the first time, but also we were being hit with the other big revenue source, like Duke Energy was going down. So huh. everything was going down then. And luckily, we had the, the unassigned fund balance to help us balance the budget. Which is why I'm always a proponent for keeping that where it is. <laughs> yeah. If we could increase it too. Well, yeah, increase maybe is something to look at next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any questions? No, I do. The high water vehicle is that for these storms and all? <clears throat> yeah, what we what we found we had a few calls, the construction fire call in the Chesapeake mobile home park. Yeah, it was horrible. I lived there. there. So, <laughs> uh, city manager d during the event and while it was happening, uh, got over to the procurement desk start looking for a vehicle that will work. Um, so this vehicle that we are bringing to the board at the next board meeting, it's about 238,000. It can go up to like 50 inches of water, a little over four feet of water. It's got a huge bed in the back, lift gates, all that stuff that we can put people in. We can get our people in and take people out. Uh, it will lack the firefighting, firefighting capabilities. Uh, that would have to be another vehicle like it with a, another setup, so maybe down the road, we can look at that too. But <coughs> this one's available. <coughs> they have a demo that's available. So uh, we brought the city manager right away, and he said, "Let's figure it out." With the money guy said he could do it. So uh, we're going to bring it to the board, and hopefully they approve it, and we'll have it. But uh, no, I think that that's great. I'm just wondering how many of our vehicles are going to be rusted out because of them flying through that water on Chesapeake. <laughs> right. We did have quite a few that tried to get through. <coughs> yeah. I know the fleet department was doing some extensive, you know, undercarriage washing and stuff like that, trying to get it all out as fast as possible. So we minimize the risk of any of that stuff damaging. That'll something that's going to, you know, have to be watched over a period of time to see what comes <coughs> about it. But, uh, yeah, how it works out. I think they should take fire trucks and be able to raise them. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> also snow. <laughs> <laughs> fire truck but you know you had to have a ladder to stick it up into it and that would be a little tough getting around in these streets with those big big tires on it and stuff so I was out in Colorado in the ski areas but yeah this one this is a six by so it'd be a pretty nice vehicle and we can do the further events in the city or whatever if we need to do it so. I, I gotta say I, I think Paul was there too but we were in the EOC when all of a sudden I think the, that fire was going on and and the two chiefs, this chief and Chief Young, did a great job because all of a sudden they just nobody could get to that fire, but they figured out. I don't know they're using. Oh, yeah, what so do you call the thing? The loaders or something? We and in, we called told Public Works to bring in front end loaders. Uh, we had we called the National Guard in. 
and saw them go Sheriff's by. Sheriff's Department had some high water vehicles. We had them on standby. We was, we started staging them because we saw what was happening. We didn't expect a fire, hmm. and that threw another wrench into it. We actually used our fire boat. We took it off the dock, put it in, inside for the storm, and then we had to throw it back in the water. And we used its fire pump at the scene. Luckily, it was right by the river. Mm -hmm. Had it not been, it would have been a lot more trouble. Our, our concern was what took so long to get there to get the sparking on the fire. You know, we were just hoping to fire hydrants, which we don't mm -hmm. normally do. But it was uh, quite a big little event, a little chaos there. And that was just, and I tried to tell everybody in the news that this is just one little event that happened. And you saw the, the I don't want to say chaos, but it was controlled chaos. In a big storm, we're going to have multiple things like that happening at one time that all the people in the EOC are going to have to do jobs, mm -hmm. sometimes you know, jobs that they're not used to doing, you know, and I'm, 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 one instance is I looked over, I was trying to figure something out, and I was worried about the nursing home on Chesapeake at the time, and, and I looked over at the IT director, and I said, I need you to do this, and then the eyes got there, <laughs> and I was like, what? I, said, I need you to do this, and she figured it out, which was, our, I was proud of her for doing it, and it was that's like, great. what I preach, you're going to have to do some things that's not in your wheelhouse, mm -hmm. when you get in that EOC, and they did it, so. That's out. amazing, yeah. I think it was a little bit of an eye opener to everybody. So, so I'm, it was the true. I'm what the what we're told on our street is that the cause of that fire was due to an electric bike. That's what we believe. Mm -hmm. I think they're still trying so to. So I think that that's good stuff to put out there. And I know, um, I think down uh, St. Pete they had the most fires at one time, and so that's unusual for us. And so I. Could be a lot of the batteries that you have in your garage, mm -hmm. you know, the blower batteries and mm -hmm. drill batteries that get salt mm -hmm. intruding in into them. Um, I think there's now four confirmed electric car fires in the county and all due to some water, salt water into them. Uh, so that's something that I think these electric cars are gonna have to figure out how to seal those batteries so they don't get that into them, salt water. It just corrodes those cells and they start arcing. Mm. So they're hard to put out. Yeah. Hey, you guys contained it to two. That was pretty incredible. I was, I was, I mean, <laughs> you guys were there. I was getting really nervous. I pictured that just, mobile homes are, go up very fast. Right. And without us getting there promptly, I was just watching, thinking, this is going to be a domino effect. And the two trailers on either side of these two were starting to show damage. So we were close to just, you know, popping through that whole nursing home. And now I'm thinking, oh, it's going to go right up to Chesapeake. And mm -hmm. you know, I was really getting concerned, but we got it. Could have been a lot worse. Right. right. I'm sure those homeowners don't believe so, but I think. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Those of us on Chesapeake are very grateful. Yeah, I was just really nervous. Uh, and I, I, I've been here 35 years. That's the worst flooding I've seen mm -hmm. in 35 years that I remember. I think we had a total of 157 homes affected, two destroyed, mm -hmm. some minor, major affected. I think we're third or fourth in the county for the most homes damaged. Mm -hmm. Next to St. Pete, Largo. <coughs> Yeah, one thing we saw, we were monitoring the um, Craig Park Bayou there, the level. And, you know, if you drive by there at the, the highest of high tides, you'll see the water, you know, maybe that high above the sidewalk. There was a barricade. It was about three feet tall. The water had reached the top of that. Yeah. So it was about three feet higher than the highest tide, if that gives you a sense of how. Yeah, they, they anticipated that the surge above high tide was four and a half feet. So... Wow. Wherever you live and you, you have water close to your home, use that as your gauge when you hear storm surge of seven feet. Okay, four and a half feet was at my door. That's where you really need to think, yeah. okay, this could be a little bit worse than the last one. So. Mm. Mm -hmm. They did a great job and stuff. But luckily, my desk in the EOC is a little further than the IDT desk, so I'm... <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I asked if I could be moved somewhere else, but <laughs> out of that room. <laughs> uh, I think he's thinking of that. No, he's not. <laughs> Any other questions for Ron? Okay, we'll move on on the agenda. Any public comments? Staff comments? Board comments? Next meeting. You saw what Ron projected for January. Uh, well, how we, we how look back. To, is that? We look back to the history, and it just 
you know, we're thinking probably by January, I've got a good, a good solid number on how the, the year we just looked, went through how it's turning out. That's, uh, I think last year we did the meeting in January. That's why we're looking at that. That's not, makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. It makes sense, plus I won't be here in October, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so the next meeting will be then be in January. Any future agenda items? Seeing none, we will adjourn, adjourn at 2.59.